Hi, my name is Victor and today I'm going to share with you a workflow for placing parametric uh, bridges on an alignment. So first, let me show you, this is a parametric family, bridge model, really detailed model, that is actually made out of an adaptive component. And it has it's completely parametric, like everything here is parametric, that slope here, you can see that these uh, slopes here are also parametric. So yeah, let me let me just show it to you. Uh, this is a length parameter here, let's change that. So it actually changes the length of the wings of the bridge. If we make this really short, you can see it now, it's going to be cut in half. Not exactly cut, but yeah. Um, then you have uh, the angle of those wings. Now the four wings are controlled with the same angle, but actually inside the family you can uh, link each wing to work with a separate angle yes and also you can see that uh, there is actually and the thickness of the wings let's make this thick and actually here the wings are going to be made continuous to the walls, but if we untick that, you can see that they are going to become really thick now. Yeah, because we set them up to 8000. Yeah, so we can either control them from here or we can just tell them inside, just make them the same thickness as the wall, make them continuous to the wall. And this bridge is so fully parametric, it's going to take me a long, long time to show you everything. But let's just check out some more things like, oh, this is important, this is the actual angle, when you look at it from above, now it is sloped to a certain angle that we can actually calculate. Uh, so let's say that angle is going to be zero. So it's a straight bridge, straight rectangular bridge. Cool, perfect. All bridges should be like that one. Uh, yeah, what else? Top thickness, offset, this is the offset from those two points. Like, we can actually use different offsets. And if I make one of it minus 8000, the whole thing is going to start rotating. But uh, yeah, these two should generally be the same because this offset also controls the height of the bridge or the depth because we're placing the bridge with those two adaptive points on top and it's going down what else um, top thickness avoid height okay width of the bridge right now it's uh, 30 meters we can always change it to let's say 20 meters or if you don't need it that long we can say 10 meters And yeah, 
yeah all these parameters here and also here wing parameters different thicknesses and what i was talking about is actually that thing here we can make it 2000 millimeters so it gets wider uh, slab uh, this is the slab down here so we have parameters controlling the slab shape so this is the chamfer edge it's also parametric you can make that 300 and it looks like this these are the angles of those inclines so we can actually control them separately we can say that one of them is going to be two degrees so it's going to get yeah as you can see here it gets really thin in this angle right now so let me show you now the dynamo workflow and how it looks like I'm going to delete that bridge first and before I'm going to Dynamo workflow uh, I would like to invite you to subscribe if you haven't already and if you like the video press the like button if you didn't like it you know what to do uh, because this is going to help me come up with more content for this channel and I'd appreciate some feedback so here is the it's a very simple it's this is the basic workflow right now so this is how that bridge was placed there first we select model elements and those model elements right now are just lines in Revit but it could be something else it could be an import it could be a AutoCAD file but right now they are just Revit lines and since they are Revit lines I need to make them into one continuous curve so I use polycurve by joint curves and here I put a curve pointed segment land now we have two points and then I chop it in list of two and right now it doesn't make sense but I'll explain that later so here I just put the lands from where I want the bridge to start at 3000 millimeters and I want the bridge and to be at 13,000 millimeters so I hit run and the bridge is placed so let me come now to this list.chop here if we just continue like writing here 20,000 to let's say 28,000 one more zero and hit run again then we will end up with two bridge families placed at these uh, linear coordinates so here you can see now that list dot chop makes sense actually and we can see they're uh, kind of close to each other uh, we might not want that so we can actually just uh, change it here I'm just playing now uh, can do it like let's do a really wide bridge actually let's make it to oops we don't have so much length here but yeah let's try that it's crazy 40 meters bridge with this family let's see it looks cool <laughs> you can see that actually this uh, incline now is kind of too much it's not realistic and we can change it to one percent which is more realistic but if we're going to do something more realistic we're not going to use that family for such a wide bridge anyway and yeah let's let's put a uh, third one from 70,000 to 
90,000 and 200 because why not 200 thinking for our Lido and now we have three bridges alongside this path here and right now their orientation of them is just uh, by default 50 degrees 15 degrees but actually we can measure whatever we want if we have some kind of path in this direction we can we can control all of these parameters with dynamo as you as you might know so with dynamo you can just go to uh, parameter by name set parameter by name so here you can just connect these newly created families use some of the uh, yeah it's angle it's called angle and right now i'm just going to pull three random angles in a list uh, 10 17 and i'm going to hit run And now we have 0, 10 and 17 here. And of course we can always further control manually these the parameters of these bridges separately like uh, thickness, height, the wing angle, the wing length, make it Yeah, let's make it crazy. Yeah. Looks cool, doesn't it? And that's it. Uh, this is what I wanted to show you. Like, I, I can't really get too much into how this model was created because it's uh, going to be a long long video uh, but it's a cool workflow I think it's a nice family it's not perfect yet maybe but also like you can customize it for your needs when you when you get it this is how it looks inside many points but not nothing really crazy all the parameters here some formulas so there there is some trigonometry here but uh, nothing scary actually so thank you guys for watching and I might share this model but it's going to be for some kind of a fee and I don't know if it's worth it to share the down file because it's it's so easy to recreate just like just yeah look at it and if you need pause the video it's easy to do so check out my website revitexperiments.com where i upload some of those uh, families there is also a free uh, ebook that you can uh, download there it's with 27 tips and tricks for working in revit most of the time no dynamo involved in that book 
so yeah uh, check it out and thank you for watching see you next time bye bye